like to say that personally I'm not really superstitious, although I believe it can be unlucky to piss on an electric fire. <laughs> just, a, just a hunch, you know. And yet I find that certain things have an uncanny way of repeating themselves. Like, for instance, I come from a long line of dead people. <laughs> Communication, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I have trouble sometimes communicating, especially with kids. I don't know why this is. Maybe it's because when I was a kid, when I was growing up, there's so many things in our house that were never talked about. I don't know what they were, we never talked about them. But um, <laughs> the kids today are so mature. You certainly can't patronise them the way you could when I was alive. <laughs> My goodness me, you've certainly grown. How old are you now? Ten? What about you? You must be pushing 40. <laughs> and tell me, how are you doing at school? Not bad. What about you? Are you working yet? <laughs> my cat died. That was my fault. We had a few drinks, you know. Cat got pissed. Staggered into the traffic. <laughs> Road pizza, basically, we're talking about. There was nothing for it but to take a shovel and slice him into triangles for the birds, you know. But I like walking around. The trouble about walking, I find, is that, you know, I like to walk fast. Even when I dawdle, I dawdle fast. I don't muck about. But people keep getting in the way, don't they? I mean, you come up behind them on the pavement. Pensioners, maybe, you know. Two or three abreast. You know, hardly even people anymore, really. Just you know, little clouds of memories doddering along. You know. But, you know, and you can never get by without shoving one of them into the road. God, it's infuriating. No, because I don't like to patronise old people. I don't. In fact, I deliberately go out of my way not to patronise them. Young man, I'm 85 years old. Yeah? You look it. <laughs> but then you make your own luck, as my old granddad said, just before he spontaneously combusted. <laughs> of course, he had it coming to him, you know. But some people die tragically early, don't they? Like, like Mozart, in fact. Six o'clock in the morning. Never even had time to put the kettle on. What a tragedy. Unless you believe in reincarnation, which I don't, not this time around anyway. But um, <laughs> they actually dug up Mozart's skull. This is true. I don't know whether you read about this. This happened last year. Because Mozart was buried in a mass grave, a pauper's grave in Germany, right? So how they knew it was his skull, maybe they blew into it and it played some nice music or something. I don't know. But the thing is, they made a plaster cast of what Mozart looked like purely based on the skull. It's brilliant. Apparently Mozart had prominent teeth, huge eye sockets, a bald head and no ears. <laughs> A lot of funny stories. My favourite, though, from 1990. The bloke who got nicked for fucking a cat on the tube. <laughs> hey, you must have read about it. It was in all the quality papers. <laughs> I was shocked, me. I thought we were a nation of dog lovers. <laughs> you usually I walk up to the common and watch all the fitness fanatics jogging around. Everybody wants to run through the pain barrier these days. I'm just going to walk through it, bollocks. <laughs> I may even take a cab. <laughs> Taxi, pain barrier, please. Where's that thing go? Why ain't going through Brixton? Not this time of night. Fuck off. <laughs> I'd always like to give taxi drivers a good tip. I say never stick a sharp object in your ear. <laughs> and justice. Another one. Justice. Nothing to do with the law. Like not to bring back capital punishment or capital radio as it's now sometimes known. <laughs> you know, real justice is much more poetical. Like something like the editors of Sunday Sport being kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> you know, and being forced to mate with the Loch Ness Monster and for nobody to believe them. That's justice. I've often thought that Cecil Parkinson should have his bollocks slapped with a wet towel every hour on the hour. No special reason. I just feel instinctively that it would be right. And I'm going to trust myself on that one, I think. I'd like to see Bernard Matthews with 50 pounds of sage and onion stuffing round up his ass. How does that feel, Bernard? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Then I usually go to have a pub lunch, you know, nine pints of lager and a packet of crisps. That's, uh, I drink Holston, me. Nine pints of that stuff, you sleep like a baby. You shit the bed, basically. <laughs> My local pub's called the Traveller's Rest. Sign on the door says, no travellers. <laughs> unfortunate, isn't it? You know, because I think pubs are for everyone. To me, the pub is the focal point of the whole British culture. A wonderful forum for the free exchange of alcohol for money. And yet there's so much prejudice against alcohol in our society. Like people will jump to conclusions about you if they happen to see you with a drink in your hand all the time. 
but I actually find it helps me to, you know, unlax and rewind and stuff. And... Ah, besides, being conscious isn't everything. That's what I always say. Actually, what I always say is, remember, there's a lot more to life than just eating, drinking and screwing. But why be greedy? <laughs> uh, because Jesus, he was a popular bloke because he did a lot of miracles, like being born in the year 4 BC. That was a tricky one to follow. <laughs> you don't want to get Jesus? Go on. <laughs> incidentally, inc the last thing I want to do tonight is offend someone's religious beliefs. But before we get to that, but dogs get a bad press, and it's not justified because dogs are actually very civilized creatures in many ways. For instance, dogs don't copulate like people. They usually do it sober. <laughs> It's true, and they haven't got the same hang-ups about their personal relationships. They're not afraid to get, get down and have a good sniff. That's not a good sniff up the ass. Find out if someone's right for you. That's what dogs do, and the answer is always yes. <laughs>